Have you ever wondered why we domesticated horses instead of zebras? So I always thought about this, like zebras look mad cool, but why did we pick horses instead of zebras? Domesticating an animal means that they must meet a certain criteria, and um, zebras are crazy. You know that saying, like, it's either fight or flight? Well, zebras, zebras do both. These guys are extremely unpredictable, and, and they have no problem attacking humans. If you get too close, they'll bite you, and you do not want to be kicked by a zebra. Zebras actually have the strongest kick out of all animals. They can kick with the force of one and a half metric tons. All it takes is one kick to a lion's chest, and it can be fatal. So just imagine that, that being your jaw. Probably not a fun time. But on top of that, zebras are just jerks. They're a bit hard-headed. They don't like us, and they definitely will not respond to our orders. Just think about it this way. If you grew up having to fight off lions, cheetahs, leopards, and hyenas, you'd probably be a little rough around the edges. Compared to your long-lost Ukrainian... <laughs> I don't know why I have the giggles right now. I can't do this. Compared to your long-lost Ukrainian relatives that only have to fight off wolves, foxes, and maybe like a brown bear. It's kind of like comparing a kid growing up in the streets of West Philadelphia while your cousin grew up around a gated community in Bel Air. So that's exactly why we domesticated horses instead of zebras. And as always, man, peace and love, baby. We got another one. Yeah, we got another one, but I like these guys, man. Let's get into it. What we have here today is the gloomy nudibranch. So first, what is a nudibranch? Nudibranchs are a group of 3,000 different species of sea slugs that don't have shells. You see those things that stick out of its head that kind of look like ears? Those are sensory organs that help them detect scent since they can barely see. And what we have back here are gills, which help them extract oxygen from the water so they can breathe. These sea slugs are usually found alone or with one other slug, which is usually their mate, and their breeding process is it just, just look it up. But that's all I got for the gloomy nudie pranks today. Let me know in the comments which animal I should do next. And as always, man, peace and love, baby. Talk about hippos. Now, hippos do come out looking very cute. They start like this, but end up like this. And this is the most dangerous animal in Africa. Nope, not the lion, not the crocodile, not the rhino. Yep, the hippo. The most dangerous animal in Africa. Hippos are actually responsible for over 500 human deaths a year. Now get this, hippos grow to 16 feet and 3,000 pounds, which means they're kind of chunky. But they are one of the most aggressive animals in the world, and they still run 30 miles an hour. I'm not finished. They have the second strongest bite coming just behind crocodiles, with a bite force of 1,800 PSI. So just remember, hippos are nothing to play with. And as always, peace and love, baby. All right, so today we're gonna learn about the shoebill stork. First, um, they're dinosaurs to me. They're dinosaurs. They can grow to about five feet, wingspan about seven and a half feet. They, any, any bird that's over four feet is like a dinosaur to me. They're um, aggressive. Yes, they're aggressive. So aggressive that it's been reported that they've even fought like Nile crocodiles. Yeah, and when they're not in the mood to fight, they'll give you that stare that your mom gives you when you know you're wrong, and she knows you're wrong, but she wants you to know that she knows you're wrong. Also, like pretty much all the other storks, they kind of go number two on themselves to cool themselves down when it's warm. So from what I've heard, they're very rare being only about 5,000 of these guys left. Now they definitely look pretty scary, but I still think they're pretty cool. And as always guys, peace and love, baby. We're gonna learn about the geladas today. I actually didn't know anything about them, until today. These are extremely rare primates that are exclusively found in the highlands of Ethiopia or, you know, at the San Diego Zoo. They live in troops with one dominant male that takes care of and leads a whole group of females and their babies. Their main predators are leopards, but that's not their biggest threat. I'm gonna give you like one second to guess their biggest threat. Yep, you guessed it. Humans. The problem is we keep moving closer and closer to their land. Now farmers out there in the Ethiopian highlands do not enjoy these monkeys eating their grass. So they retaliate. Which could cause some problems, but at the end of the day, the monkeys were kind of here first. But that's all the time I have to talk about gelatas today. And as always guys, peace and love, baby. So I have 60 seconds to show you why pangolin are in my top five. First of all, name me three cuter animals. As babies, they ride on their mother's backs by hanging onto their scales. And just, just look at them. When feeling threatened, they roll into this cute little ball to protect themselves. These mammals have no teeth 
and they pretty much only eat termites, ants, and pebbles. So I guess eating pebbles helps out with their digestive system. In order to eat, they use their tongues, which can actually be longer than their whole body. Yes, that thing can be over two feet long. But these cute little animals are almost extinct because of us humans. There's an illegal market for their scales and their meat. Being one of my favorite animals, I want to protect the pangolin at all costs. And as always, peace and love, baby. Oh my god, Niall. Oh my god, Niall! Oh my Niall! God. Yeah. Just a friendly reminder that rhinos, nothing to play with. Just think about it, a 12 foot, 3,000 pound monster with anger issues that can barely see. Rhinos can only see 15 feet in front of them. Yes, 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 yes. If you're confused, that was a 22 foot, 12,000 pound orca kicking a full grown seal 80 feet into the air. The real question here is why? Why would an orca? kick a seal 80 feet into the air. The logical answer is that it loosens the seal's skin because orcas don't eat their skin. But the real answer is because it's fun. Yeah, it's fun. I guess they love having fun and fun isn't always fun for everyone. But I guess you just have to enjoy yourself whichever way that you actually enjoy yourself. And as always, man, peace and love. Today we have animals that you probably didn't know that you can own. Part two. First, we have the two-toed sloth. They grow to about two feet, 15 pounds, and live for 30 years. They really just eat leaves and fruit, so you know, they're, they're not too much to deal with, right? In a number of states, you can own a porcupine. It can be trained to an extent and even learn to show affection to humans. Very independent and need their own space, so if you smother them too much, the, the, they can't attack you. Other than them needing their own space, they're very easygoing pets. Last, you can own bears in a few states out here. Like, I, I don't understand why, but you can own them. But you won't be able to own bears for too much longer if the Humane Society has any say in it. So so get them while you can actually don't, don't get them while you can just they're they're huge and too much to deal with don't 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 get a bear i just wanted to give you guys a friendly reminder that the jaguar is still nothing to play with not only are they six feet long 200 pounds but they have the strongest bite out of any big cat but that's not it think about this they have the second strongest bite out of any land animal only coming behind the hippo Though they are a little chunky compared to the other big cats, they still run 50 miles an hour. Part of their diet does in fact include caiman. Remember how I said they're kind of chunky? That's because they eat anything and everything, so that's not any better for us. And you know they're um, excellent swimmers, so you can't run away from them, can't climb away from them, and you can't even swim away from them. That's all I got on the Jaguar today, just make sure you stay safe guys. And as always, peace and love baby. Some of the smartest animals in the world. First we have the sea lion, they are smarter than they look. They're smart enough to have the ability to read letters, numbers, and signs. In my personal experience, when I used to go fishing, they would follow the boat and they could easily tell the difference in between a fish on a hook and a fish off a hook, like within a second. Chimpanzees, they actually share over 90% of the same DNA as humans. It's crazy to me, they can learn sign language, completely separate friends from enemies, and even in some cases, like trade currency. On top of all that, they are ripped to shreds. And last, my favorite, the orca. Let me show you how smart they are just by them hunting. Look, they're, they're checking out the seal, right? They assess the situation and decide we're all gonna swim at the same time to make a wave to get the seal off the ice. That's scary. I'm just happy they can't walk, man. 